Ramos, the three-time All-American for Iowa. 133, we move up. Jace Palmer, 11-9 this year. The redshirt freshman all the way from Casper, Wyoming, getting ready to take on sixth-ranked Mickey Phillippe. 9-1 this year, coming off a sudden victory win last week over seventh-ranked Sam Latona. Four-time NCAA qualifier, and just like Nino Bonacorsi, the veteran leadership that these two provide this squad. Mickey Phillippe, everyone knows that he's so good on the mat, but he, he realizes that he has to open it up a little more offensively on his feet in order to be one that's going to compete for a national championship. Early two-on-one here for Phillippe as he works on the right arm of Chase Palmer. Palmer trying to clear out his arm. Phillippe clamping down even harder. What he'll do is take that two-on-one and then he'll go to a single on the right side of his opponent. So he's going to try and isolate the right side of his bo the body of his opponent and then drop down to a single. And the coaching staff has said that they've really liked what Palmer has done. He's gotten better. He's gotten more confident. And when you get confidence, it just helps your wrestling game because you'll do what you've been taught. Now, at this point, I would, I would, I, I mean, I'm not Coach Gavin, but I would say, Mickey, let's, let's try and do something else. This isn't really doing anything. It, it's wearing his opponent down, but they want points. And the official said the same thing, nothing is improving. What a job Keith Gavin has done, year number six, 2008 pick graduate. Looking to beat North Carolina, though, for the very first time. Coleman Scott talked about how both him and Keith go way back, both Pennsylvania natives. They traveled together on the Pennsylvania club team for a number of years. A lot of respect between these two coaches and what they have done with these programs. And although they've grown up together and they wrestled internationally, they both want to win. One minute. They want to coach hard. And so here's, here's the thing. Mickey, Mickey Philippi is, is controlling it. Some people call it a rushing. It's a two-on-one. But it's not really creating any offense here. And just as I say that, it creates offense. really makes his money, and that's being tough on top. Now, in the back of his mind, Phillippe knows that he is the heavy favorite. He just doesn't want to put too much pressure on himself in order to try and get bonus points. He still has to wrestle, and Chase Paul is doing a good job of getting to his feet. Phillippe struggling to bring him back, and then he does with some authority late. Short time wrestling. Phillip be in a better position to ride out the final few moments of this period. And it will be a 2-0 lead for the senior from Derry, Pennsylvania. So he hooked a leg, and when he had the leg hooked, he dropped down to a single, and then he just went to a typical trip, and then he covered both legs. Mickey Phillippe started his career at Virginia with Steve Garland. Keith Gavin and Jordan Lean were two assistants at the time. He had one good year in Charlottesville. He redshirted, won 25 matches. He was homesick, though. He wanted to come back to Pittsburgh and be with his family. Comes from a very large family. So wouldn't you know it, Gavin then took the job in the spring of 2017, and Phillippe followed Keith right here to his town. Immediately, Coach Ramos said, do not roll out of that. You don't want to roll out of that because Mickey had good position. It was going to catch him. Phillippe won a couple of ACC championships in 19 and 20, a couple of runner-ups the last couple of years, losing to Corbin Myers in close matches. Cuts out the foot, brings down Palmer, but Palmer showing some resolve underneath, just continues to battle. And that's exactly right. He is continuing to battle. He is continuing to battle.
So little, little, little gamesmanship here. Every time that the action gets towards the UNC, the UNC starts to speak to the referees, starting to put some, some words. Look at this. What's going on here? Pay attention to this. Just the way on it, but, but Nick Grasso and Kevin Lynch, they, they've been to NCAAs. They, they know what it's like. And so now Mickey is trying his best to get the legs in. But Palmer's doing a good job of keeping that right hip down so Mickey Phillippe's right leg cannot get in. And you, you hear the coaching right here. The coach is trying to tell him what's going on. And Mickey Phillippe is doing what he does. He's trying to roll the wrist out and control the right side of the body. This is a typical Mickey Phillippe match. He gets the takedown early. He's tough on top. He just smothers an opponent. Has won a lot of tight matches, low scoring matches throughout his career. He has, he has, but, but here's the thing. 15. This is a dual meet, a dual meet, and when you're favored as much as Mickey Phillippe is, he won a tough match against San Matona. They expect not just a win, they want bonus points. So Mickey Phillippe all but has riding time secured. Over two and a half minutes of riding time, Phillippe headlining the ranked ACC wrestlers. He has the win over Latona last week. Kyle Arini will be his opponent next week when those two meet. Philippi is away, 3-0. 125 career wins for Philippi, who goes right back to the arm tie, the two-on-one. Chase Palmer trying to do his best to stay out of that tie-up, does not want precious time weaned off this clock. That's just a clock killer, so Philippi slides down. Smooth attack around the ankle. He's, he's tabling the leg, putting on thighs, going to try to step over. So you see Coach Evans said, get out. And now he says, we want to go neutral. Stand them up, go neutral. They're looking for bonus points at this point. It is now with riding time, it's really 6-0, but now it's 6-1. Mickey Phillippe needs a couple more takedowns if he wants the bonus points. Again, a major decision, eight points or more, eight to 14 points, and you pick up four team points in the dual score in the upper right-hand corner. Here's the real first shot by Palmer, smothered pretty easily by Phillippe. Phillippe goes right back to the arm. Goes right back, little foot sweep action. What? What? Oh! But Palmer almost had, had an opportunity to score there. Right in time security, 6-1 right now. Mickey needs to score either a takedown, some near falls, or a couple takedowns. And Palmer's doing a good job of just holding position. And he's even shooting, I like that. I like that, he said, I'm not just holding on, I'm gonna show myself. Showing myself means like I'm gonna be offensive without being foolish. They're really high on Jace Palmer, four-time state champion in Wyoming, one of 24 wrestlers in the history of Wyoming to do that. Just cannot get to his offense, and Philippi continues to add to the lead. Cut and release. Keep in mind he has riding time, so Phillippe needs another takedown to get the 14 points for Pitt. But he runs out of real estate with just two seconds to go. Just a little late with his offense. I, I believe that in the first period, he, he could have gone to something else. That's a caution, a little over the false start. Two seconds left. You're going to take down two seconds left, and you're incredible. So Mickey Phillippe does what he's supposed to do. He gets the win. A typical, a typical Mickey Phillippe win. Takedown, dominant on the mat. And now we're setting ourselves in position for Wagner. Patting his chest. But it's all setting up for 141 with Lachlan McNeil and Cole Matthews. Mickey Phillippe doing what he's supposed to do. But 141 is coming up next. And that's going to be a good one.